Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about whether you should or should not buy a whisper room vocal booth. Now, I had someone in our soundproofing community reach out to me in the comments and ask about this, and I became fascinated about it. I've known about these uh, whisper room vocal booths. They've been around since the 90s. Um, they're used in a lot of commercial TV uh, studios and also in commercial studios all over the world. So I was like, okay, people are buying these. Let's do a uh, full video on whether this is worth your money or not. And will it soundproof up to your needs or not? So stick around to figure all those questions out. Before we jump in, I will say that I will be using my soundproofing budget calculator. This is a calculator that takes all the information I know from the cost of building a soundproof studio and allows you to simply enter in your square footage or square meters and it'll pop out a number for you of how much your studio will cost. So we're gonna be using that to help us understand the cost of building a vocal booth and make sure to download that at soundproofyourstudio.com slash calculator. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash calculator later if you want to follow along with me. All right, all that said, we are going to jump into this lesson on should you buy a Whisper Room vocal booth or not? All right, so I decided to do this lesson on the actual Whisper Room website, which I think will be helpful for those of you on YouTube. If you're on the podcast listening, I will do my best to describe what I'm talking about. So the first question I want to ask is simply, what is the whisper booth? So I'm gonna go over here to learn more. So the first question we're gonna ask is, what is the whisper booth? Essentially what it is, is that it's a prefabricated booth structure made out of their MDF boards and specific materials that they use. And they come in two features, either the single wall or the double wall, and you can get varying degrees of complexity with them. You could have just a simple four by four booth, or you can build a bigger drum booth or things like that. And they also come with certain packages that come with everything you would need included. So it makes it a little cheaper and easier for you to make decisions on it. So what they have involved is a built-in ventilation system, which is really awesome because that is pretty hard to do on your own if you don't understand how ventilation works. Uh, it, it consists of just one single fan that is going to be pulling or bringing in air and then it exhausts uh, passively through the roof, if I understand correctly. So the idea is that the warm air will exit through the top of the booth and the cooler air from the outside of your booth will come in through the bottom, creating ventilation. It comes with a door with a window, which is pretty nice, a uh, 16 inch by 30 door. Uh, and then we do have two size doors is uh, 12 by 30 inch and 16 by 30 inch for the door windows. Now, if we look at the different things you can get here, you get cable passages as well. And it comes with some acoustic studio foam by Arlex. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with studio foam. It's just not gonna help with lower frequencies, but it will help with frequencies uh, in the vocal range. So if you're using this for a vocal booth, uh, this Arlex studio foam can help with reducing some of the early reflections. Comes with a little light and a remote switch for the fan and the, and the rooms. So that's just the basic overview of what the Whisper Room comes with on a very basic level. Now, the next main question you're gonna have is how well does this actually soundproof? So I went in and I looked at their noise reduction tab under their learn more tab on their website. And this takes us to an interesting little tool or calculator that they have. And it talks about baseline decibels. It shows a frequency uh, chart of 125 Hertz up to 4,000 Hertz, which is usually considered the audible main section of your vocal range. And it also coincides with STC ratings uh, for wall assemblies and ceiling assemblies and floor assemblies and doors and windows. They only measure from 125 Hertz to 4,000 Hertz. This doesn't include low bass frequencies, so from their tool, we can't really estimate how well their vocal booths will reduce against low bass frequencies, and we also don't know how well it will do up above 4,000 hertz, although to sound isolate above 4,000 hertz is relatively easy to do and doesn't take quite as much effort. 
So the first thing that I would recommend that you do is download a decibel meter on your phone. It's an app. You can get decibel X is the one I like the best. And you want to figure out what your baseline decibel level is. And this can be done by measuring at different times of the day and trying to get an average uh, and also noticing if there's a relatively loud time in your room that you want to put this whisper room vocal booth into. Figure out what's the loudest noise you're going to be dealing with. Uh, if you go down here on this chart, for those of you listening, uh, this is a chart that shows you what different decibel levels mean in terms of just our everyday lives. So 30 decibels is a quiet rural area. 110 decibels is standing next to a car horn. And uh, 100 decibels are speakers in a club. And more for our residential needs, you know, the vacuum cleaner is around 70 decibels. So if someone was vacuuming in your house or if there was a conversation, uh, like a restaurant conversation is 60 decibels. So let's just say that um, your decibel needs are 70 decibels is the loudest sound you're going to encounter in your room and we can then click expected range on their calculator and this will pull up uh, both the decibel reduction and also the expected range that things will fall into um, so I like the expected range part of this better actually now that I look at this because it helps me understand um, relative to recording studio design where this booth could potentially fall into. So all this said, I want to bring up another topic, which is the noise criterion curve. And this helps uh, us as acoustic designers and soundproofing engineers figure out what our ideal uh, levels for each octave, one eighth octave band here uh, is. So if we look at this chart from the Roger Weiss book, we can see that it goes from 63 hertz all the way up to 8,000 hertz, but we're going to look at the 125 to 4,000 to try to compare some levels here with our whisper room. So an ideal recording studio environment is in the NC15 to NC20 range. Now that means noise criterion 15, noise criterion 20. This is simply a label that describes the decibel readings that are ideal at each frequency brand. So if we look at this chart, we can see that at 125 hertz, we want somewhere between 36 and 40 dB. You can see here you're a little bit on the high end uh, for an ideal recording studio, and you're falling more in the NC25 range uh, for the 125 hertz. For 250, we want it between 29 and 33. Again, you're above that. 500 hertz, you want it between 22 and 26. Again, you're above that. 1,000 hertz, you want it between... 17 and 22 dB, we're way above that. And then 2000 Hertz, we want it between 14 and 19 dB, uh, also way above that. And then 4000, you want it between 12 and 17. So I don't think we can get down, if we start looking at like uh, 60 is our main thing, we can start to get down into that range. And then let's look here at 55. Uh, once you get down to 55 is the amount you're trying to reduce, they say it gets harder and harder to do that because of the logarithmic scale of the decibel spectrum. So without getting too complicated in the math and the idea of loudness, um, this is where you kind of run into some issues with these um, whisper rooms and soundproofing is that they do a pretty good job, I would say, in a relatively quiet room already, but as soon as you're trying to reduce louder and louder sounds, it's hard to get that ideal range for a professional level recording studio. Now, all this said, you know, can you still functionally record voiceover work if you're not at exactly the NC15 or NC20? Yes, you know, it's obviously possible. We're just talking about relative terms here to know what we're dealing with in terms of professional level recording studios and your home studio with a whisper room. Okay, so I hope that helped a little bit with the soundproofing side, but it's not perfect. We don't really know exactly how well this booth will soundproof compared to a professionally built structure like I would recommend doing. But I would venture to say that building a professional structure from the ground up or building a booth inside your existing room will probably give you better results than one of these whisper rooms. So now the next question we have to ask ourselves is how much does this whisper room cost compared to building it yourself? So to do that, let's just, they publish their, uh, prices on their website. I'm going to go to products and then booth packages. And 
they have a bunch of different uh, options for us musicians and recording people. I'm going to stick with the voice over package and I'm going to go with the deluxe package because it en offers the enhanced double wall. Now this package will come in at $11,118 and 80 cents. So it's not cheap. And this is a four foot by four foot, a total of 16 square feet of room uh, to do your voiceover work or vocals uh, or recording. Maybe you could fit a guitar in there, but it's going to be a little tight. And the other option is to go with the, st the standard single wall, which we know will not give you uh, as good results on the soundproofing side of things, and that will drop the price down to $7,176.30. Still very expensive for a four by four foot space. So now let's take a look at my budget calculator and figure out exactly how much this would cost to do on your, on your own as a DIY project. So, here I have the budget calculator, which again, you can download if you're following along at soundproofyourstudio.com slash calculator. And that will allow you to download your own copy of this and play around with it as needed. So the first thing I did is I put the number 16 up in the square footage area. For those of you, those of you using meters, I even have a calculator built in to help you figure that out. Um, so you can add that in if you like. And then I also put in the number of doors is gonna be one because we're building a single vocal booth with one door. And if we wanted to add the window into our door, I estimated it at 1.5 square feet, um, but we can make it slightly bigger or smaller depending on our needs. So on this left column over here, you can disregard a lot of this information, but these are the cost per square foot of all the soundproofing supplies that I use to build my studio from the ground up. But we're not going to do that. We're building a studio in an existing structure. In this case, not a studio, but a vocal booth. So if we look over here on this column, we can see that I took out the cost of the foundation, the roofing, the siding. I halved all the lumber, halved all the paint. In this case, you wouldn't even necessarily need paint, but it's only $20, no big deal. And I have the labor, which would be about $380 if you were hiring it out. Now the total cost of your vocal booth to make something as good, or in my opinion, much better than the Whisper Room, would be $3,454.80. If you add a 20% buffer, just to give you that extra wiggle room of, hey, maybe we go over budget a little bit, you're still looking at $4,145.76. Compare that to the total cost that we had before of $11,118.80, you get a difference of $7,664 between the deluxe version with double walls and your version with double walls. So this is something to think about. You could save yourself $7,500, more than $7,500, building this yourself. All right, so there you have it. Do you want to buy a vocal booth or not? Now there's a bunch of pros and cons that we talked about in this lesson. And I would say that there are some reasons you may want to buy this. Now it is extremely expensive uh, for the cost per square footage relative to building it yourself. But the benefits of this is if you have a large budget where you're like, okay, I'm gonna spend seven to $11,000 on a vocal booth. I want it delivered right to my doorstep. It's gonna be easy to install. We can just set it up in my existing room and then this might be a good product for you. I will say that the soundproofing of it looks like it's probably not gonna be as good as if you had built your own DIY vocal booth. So you're not gonna get maybe the best results, especially in the low end, uh, as if you had built it yourself. That said, if you're a professional voiceover artist and this budget works for you, sure, go ahead, get it. I think in most quiet homes, this vocal booth will be fine. If you're in an extremely noisy environment, I would question whether you could get the volume down low enough to actually do quiet vocal work. Now, reasons why you should not get this. One, straight off the bat, if you don't have the money to do this, if you can't spend seven to $11,000 on a vocal booth and you wanna spend closer to that $3,000 mark, then I would definitely recommend going the DIY route. The other reason that you may not wanna buy this is that you could easily build it yourself. If you have construction knowledge, building a soundproof room of that size is really not that hard. Incorporating the ventilation could be kinda of tricky, but again, I can teach you all that, it's not that hard. So with that said, you could also hire in a contractor to build it for you. And if you're already watching videos like this, researching on how to build a vocal booth, it means you're probably one of those people that 
could take the time to research it and figure it out. So that said, you would save yourself $7,000 right there. Just my gut intuition, most of you who are part of this soundproofing community, buying a prefabricated vocal booth is probably not your style. It means that you're just interested in getting it right in your home, you don't care what it looks like, and you don't wanna get your hands dirty and actually build something yourself, and you're not really interested in how to build a soundproof box of any kind, let alone a vocal booth. So, all that said, I hope this video was helpful in helping you decide whether you should invest in one of these whisper rooms or maybe another product similar to it, or build your own vocal booth. Again, if you are interested in learning more about how much it costs to build a soundproof studio, check out my soundproofing budget calculator. You can download this at soundproofyourstudio.com slash calculator. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash calculator. Thank you all so much for watching, or if you're on our podcast listening to this lesson on is a whisper room booth worth it or not? All right, until next week, I will see you all later and best of luck with your soundproofing journey. Thank you.